Uh, great to see you, Mick. Welcome back. Or I should say, well, you've been here. I haven't. But uh, great to see you once again. It was always said that, you know, Joe Biden is the best person to go up against Donald Trump. Is that still true? Laura, it's starting to be discussed amongst the left, amongst the Democrats, that maybe he's not. Keep in mind, questions about President Biden's mental acuity, whether or not he's got early stages dementia, whether or not he's up to the job, have been regular conversations on the right amongst the Republicans since before he was elected. But this past week, there was a very high-profile article written in the Atlantic newspaper. This is one of the most prominent left-leaning papers in the United States. Now, it was written, it was an opinion piece written by a former Bush administration, a Republican um, uh, writer, but it was published in a in a prominent left-leaning paper. It essentially said that maybe Joe Biden is too old, maybe he's not up to the job, maybe it's time for a younger Democrat to take over. When a prominent left-leaning uh, paper like The Atlantic gives that story time and attention, mm. um, that means that uh, the discussion has started to change amongst the Democrats themselves. Is there an obvious alternative, though? No, there isn't. In, in, under ordinary circumstances, the vice president, Kamala Harris, would be the natural person that the party would look to. But she's even less popular, even amongst Democrats, than, than the president is himself. So we have the very uh, sort of uh, high profile governor of California. There's some senators who would be interested in the job. But there is no heir apparent in the Democrat Party, similarly, by the way, to how there's no heir apparent within, in the Republican Party after Donald Trump. What is making Kamala Harris so unpopular? Because she is kind of hidden from, um, you know, mainstream uh, media. Think with a president like Joe Biden, uh, ageing, a little bit tired, gaff-prone, that they would get her to do more things front and centre, but they just don't. She's had some very high-profile failures. She was put in charge of the border, uh, and then it turned out after several weeks of being in charge of our border between Mexico and the United States, she had never even been there. She's had a great deal oh. of staff turnover. The rumors are rampant out of her office that she's difficult to work with. Keep in mind, she was not very popular when she ran for president. She actually ran for president against Joe Biden in 2020. Didn't last very long because she polled at, I believe, 1% or 2% and never did very well. So she's never been that popular nationally anyway. She was picked by the Democrats in large part because she was an African-American woman, um, mm. that he was a white American male, and they needed the balance on their ticket. Um, so she's never had per, uh, popularity a separate and apart from her associations with Joe Biden. So for a variety of reasons, is she a viable candidate? Sure, she's the sitting yeah. vice president of the United States, but she is not the heir apparent. No offence, but what does this say about your political processes in America and the state of democracy when you have a, a president like Joe Biden uh, saying he's going to run for another term and also Donald Trump being the most, you know, popular leader according to the polls yeah. on the Republican side. What does that say? And I think one is 80 and the other is 76. And so, yeah. forth. look, I don't think we're the only country where politicians try and hang on as long as they possibly can. And parties, and to a certain extent, voters, sometimes like the devil they know better than the devil they don't. So, uh, you know, what has Joe Biden got going for him in the eyes of the Democrats? He beat Donald Trump, and they appreciate that. It's always difficult to displace the head of a political party, regardless mm -hmm. of what part of the world you're in. So it's a variety of reasons. But, yeah, I, at the recent poll, and I've seen LJ says that as many as two-thirds of Americans would like to see somebody other than Trump and Biden at the top of the ticket. But wow. right now, that's still the way it looks. That could change, however, here in the next couple of months. I'm just looking at some of the headlines here. The evidence mounts that Democrats are souring on Biden. The Hill, step aside Joe Biden, Atlantic, as you mentioned. When is the optimal time for Biden to drop out of the race? The Hill, again, we need a serious conversation about Joe Biden's brain. Like They are extraordinary uh, headlines. And to one of those questions, when is the optimal time for him to drop out and how would he do it? Yeah, there's two answers to that question. It's very interesting, Laura. It's not, it's not really been debated here. The easy answer is the sooner the better because it would allow all the other Democrats to get involved in the race. But the more subtle answer is after the convention in the summer of 2024. Why mm. is that? Because after the parties pick their nominee, if the nominee changes, the party picks them. The voters do not. Ooh, so let's say, clever. for example, the Democrats wanted to offer Oprah Winfrey or Michelle Obama. Um, they would wait till after the convention because that way the party leaders pick the nominee, not the voters. Is Michelle Obama a serious option here? 
I don't think she is. I, I don't pretend to know the Obamas at all. I've met them a couple of times, but I know a lot of Democrats. I do a lot of television here. In fact, just today, I was talking to some high profile Democrats uh, in a television interview. And I said, look, is anybody from the Obama family given any indication they want to come back to Washington? And the answer is always an unmitigated no chance. Oprah Winfrey, maybe, but not Michelle Obama. All right, finally, let's end on cocaine in the White House. Where's that investigation yeah, sure, up to? why not? Is let's, it Hunter Biden? I know the Republicans <laughs> want, him, want it to be Hunter Biden's, but surely not. Uh, I doubt it. I could bore you with details of what that <laughs> part of the White House looks like, um, where the cocaine was found. Uh, my guess, LJ, is if it was found where we now think it was, about 500 people a day go through there, and the chances of finding whoever actually put it there are, is very slim. I know there's a lot of Republicans who would love for it to be Hunter Biden. I don't think that's going to happen. Still, it's mm -hmm. a very serious breach of protocol and security to have a controlled substance like cocaine inside the White House is a big deal, and I'm sure uh, the chief of staff and the Secret Service are pulling their hair out over the last couple of days, but uh, I do not think this will uh, mean the end of the Biden administration. Uh, no, certainly not. Imagine being the person who is sitting at home knowing it's theirs. That's uh, quite some pressure <laughs> to be under. <laughs> Mick Mulvaney, live in Toronto for us today. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Laura.